What's up guys, my name's Hardy and on an unregular basis I tend to upload my videos to YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to talk about two things, I'll just talk uh, about the gameplay, then um, if I have time I'll move on to things that are going on in my life and with more recent things which would be partially important to you. So uh, today I am back playing s some infamous PES 2011, I say infamous because it doesn't it always seems to cause a lot of banter between the PES fans and the FIFA fans. Um, this is a this was a master league match. I f figured I'd just come and do that. Cause I figured it'd be better than going against a, some random team that I f I thought to myself at the time I would destroy. But even going up against a not so spectacular team now, well you c you can't really t make a judgment because uh, you can't see the new squad, but. They're not that fantastic, and this is just a, another example of <sighs> my fantastic gaming skills. That, and as much as I'm a PES fan, I like to blame the game for its lack of reaction skills and the players running off where they want. I'm meant to be a fan, but I freaking hate this game sometimes. And I'm not gonna offend my own fans and my own fellow PES fans more than I already have by saying that I'm not going to give the FIBA fans anything <laughs> any more things to to throw at us but anyway uh, this is my Master League team um, I built it up from players around the overalls of around mid 60s but that would, I'd say that would be the average I think like the best dude I had was uh, around 74 in case you can't tell from the video, this was a team I created. I mentioned it in an, in an earlier vid. I created uh, the whole of the Empower Championship and the whole of the uh, Bundesliga. I won't, tell, I won't go into detail of how much detail I put in, but um, this is my Burnley team. Um, if for any of your football fans yourself, you might be able to pick out a couple of them that were at, of, uh, that are in there, that are still playing. <laughs> and it, I'll be honest, my home, my home team is shit. <laughs> so I just figured I'd boot all of them out. Apart from the good ones, and that's what you want to really do, do in a game like this. I'll give you a few Master League tips on that anyway. But uh, uh, my general game plan when I'm pl when I'm playing is just pretty much all-out attack. Just don't keep, just don't give a damn about stamina. It's something I heavily work on in the players' training. They all have stamina up around mid 80s. Some are starting to hit the 90s now. I just try and get the ball feel as fast as I can and usually I try to stay away from long ball in it uh, one because I only have a couple players that would be good at using it and I, I'm not perfect on using it effectively that I think the, a way to use it more effectively anyway in my experience would be the lofted through ball that used to work a lot in 2010 but it doesn't seem to particularly work in 2011 which is why I pretend I tend to uh, just pass it along the ground now, and that can be extremely unreliable. Because even if you fill the power bar full, and there's like nobody in your way, you, you dude won't always put what should seem like full power. And then sometimes, like if the if the guy is standing pretty much like a yard from each other, they'll blast it right past him, or you'll pass to him, and the the guy will just monger it like, oh, that's a ball. <laughs> you get the idea. It's another way of being unresponsive. I really need to stop taking a dig at my own game. What can I say? Games can frustrate me sometimes. Oh yeah, that's pretty much my game game plan. Sometimes I try playing. Oh, I I try and try and try to play like like Barcelona. Just pass it around through the midfield, but the players just. I suppose the AI just isn't strong enough to move the players about for you effectively. Like even if you do the runs, they run in the wrong freaking direction. When you pass, they get the passes don't even always go the right way. Even if you had like a short pass accuracy of 99, it's just hard to be effect as effective as you could be in another game or real life. Um, or with this game, like uh, if it was real life and you could tell the dudes exactly what to do, I think you'd be pretty much fine. Like, I think this. If you can play this game well, you can just consider yourself better than a FIFA player simply for the fact that it's more of a bitch to play. While on that, uh, I mentioned in my other video, I have played FIFA before. In fact, I picked up um, my friend. He persuaded me 
through vigorous, vigorous weeks of annoyance, and he'll probably end up watching this video and laugh at me, to pick up, uh, what, I think it was 2011. Okay, uh, so I went down to Game Station, and they had it on for 20 quid. So I figured, yeah, it's half-priced, why not? And then after four days, I thought, my God, what am I doing? I could have uh, done so much better. I think the only reason I cracked too was because simply because it was near Christmas. And when it gets near Christmas, I just want to have my Christmas games. And I think, my God, I've got nothing to play. So I always go out and buy something. So I think after about three days, I took that, I took that game back and I, brought, I bought myself two Prince of Persia's. Best decision ever. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying, that's pretty much how I play the game. I'll, I'll give you a few tips for the Master League. Um, it differentiates how you want to start by playing depending on what team you use. I'll, from my point of view, the thing you want to do is first is get rid of all the dead wood, basically. If they're old and they're, and they, they're like in the 60s, get rid of them. I should, I should make a, 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 a real tip video on this, but I'll just try doing it over this. Like the, the standard, if the PK, if the peak is standard, they'll stop developing around 27, 28. Uh, it's not always uh, easy to tell that you're better off before you start into going to your team and check, team and check it. And if you want to, even change it. You could call it cheating, but whatever. Play it to the way you want. Uh, I'll just interrupt what I'm saying now because here I decide uh, you guys might want to see um, how my team shapes up. It would help if I showed you where I started from, but this is pretty much how it looks at the minute, being six seasons in. I had a better team on 2010, but I can't really... I could show it you, but I'd have to make another video to that, and I don't think anybody would be interested in that. Anyway, that's my team. I think that is my full team. You should recognize a few, a few of the star faces in there. And you might be wondering how to more develop them. I'll go into that. Pretty much, in my experience, it's when you will offload all the bad ones. Anybody who's under the age of, who's 22 and under, if you think they can, by the age of 22, have an overall of 70, they will um, they will hit a good overall. Uh, I figured that one out in um, Pitch 2010 with Stephen Fletcher. So pretty much, if they're 70 before that, they're going to turn in, into a really good one. Like, Fletcher was at about, and this game he, he starts at 23. I'm not Stephen Fletcher, of course, no. Not, not Manchester United's Darren Fletcher. He starts at 23 years old, at about an overall of 72. And so far he's gone up to 86. Uh, now in 2010, the peaks were a bit more vigorous, and he, he went up to 89. But anyway, you get the idea. And that's what you want to start by doing when you start, unless you know of other little young gems like Jorginho, Wijnaldum, Eden Hazard, Shaqiri, that you think that could be affordable. In my experience, I only started this uh, with, I think, 10 million to spend on players. I just simply couldn't afford it. That and my team ranking was low, so I just couldn't simply afford it. I tried to stay away from the fake players, but I've been tempted in by uh, Palmeria. Uh, I, th I did the same in 2010. I think the idea would just be to go for the fake players because other teams will go for them and you can't take them out of the game that would take hours upon hours so you're better off just going with the fake ones that will become incredibly good players I only decided to sign up that Palmeria now because he glitched into the system where he basically he had no assigned team and he just kept on being reborn in the free agents so now he's uh, I think he's 15 with an overall of 74 so that boy is going to be Definitely my first choice centre back. So you get the idea of developing players. As for the first season, as, uh, when the season starts, just bring in a couple of uh, cheap, um, oldish players because they tend to go easier. Or some more, uh, some of the young ones that will develop into your uh, good ones within the next five years or so. That was always my plan from 2010. Play like <laughs> pretty much Barcelona. If you just look at the way Barcelona handle football, you'll know how to how to play football. And, ba and build on your club. Short, quick passing, and just invest in, in youth system. You want all your young gems. That, and another thing to do is um, uh, players are reborn, as a way on to word, through the, the youth system. And I'm pretty sure it still works in this one. 
where if they had a high affection for your club, they will be reborn into your youth system. So what I always used to do was, in 2010, as I say, the peaks were a bit more vigorous. Well, that wouldn't be the word, but pretty much in 2010, uh, when a player went past his peak, his overall started going down very, very sharply. Like I had like Arteta at the age of 37 maybe even 36, and he was an overall about 37. On this, in this game, it's not so bad, but but the disadvantage of that is they're going to be worth more and clubs are less likely to uh, want to sell them. But their um, the price range will certainly go down. For example, I've got Rio Ferdinand. I don't think he's, I'm not sure if he's playing now. I only have to pay 17 million for him based on his age, and I only have to pay his wages for, say, two years, and as long as I win enough competitions, he'll be very happy at the club and he'll come back through my youth system and be... Um, it'll grow up to be really, really good. That so that's two advantages. I've got a good player that I can keep for the next. I'm, I won't play that many seasons, but I can play for. I can use him for the next twenty seasons, and I'm paying less for him than I would if I waited him to be reborn at another club. And obviously, the teamwork will go up faster and things like that. That's the general idea. Base it around the young ones and. The, the older ones that are only a couple seasons of retiring. I'd say aim for about 34 players that are 34. That because they can't retire until they're 36, I believe. That's the earliest that they can they, re they can retire that I've seen. So you've got one season, one of the 35 to get their uh, affection up, and then if you're very unlucky, oh, you could call it lucky because I prefer having them retire early so they can have more squad space to come back um, again. If you're lucky, they'll, they'll say, at 36, I'm going to retire. So that's the general idea of uh, building your team up. And again, uh, I don't know how different people play, but I'd base them all around attacking. It can get kind of annoying sometimes because uh, it rubs off. It seems to rub off onto other players. Like, I don't know at which point in the game it is, but uh, Chris Smalling decides to charge up field all the time. And uh, my... Uh, my left and my right backs do it all the freaking time. They'll just charge completely upfield, and then I'm, I'm left chasing them down because the freaking AI decided, oh god, no, my other wingers need some help. Run up, run up, and help them when they're not the, some of the best in the game. Whatever, that's just me having a dig at the game again. And there's, there's not much of a way to counter that, I suppose, unless you use like mark settings where you get defense, defense-minded players. But the right back is he's a balanced, so he shouldn't be attacking. Although I think his attack is slightly higher. And again, I don't think they should be attacking that vigorously. I think in PES 2010, they found the right balance of making players attack and defend. And again, in 2010, I had an unbelievably powerful team. <laughs> the the, the centre-backs had like dribbling accuracy and uh, speeds of about 85. They were, the team was that good. They were, all, they were mostly fakes, but... I say about 25% fakes, but by God, it was a powerful team. I went undefeated for every single game I played that much the league. Didn't draw once, didn't lose once, conceded goals, yes, but I won every single game consecutively for 10 seasons. And let me tell you something, that was a fucking bad move. The player's salaries went fucking sky high. And now, of course, there is a way to counter that, that I'll tell you about. But pretty much if you put your players on a five-year deal, which you should do with every single player possible, unless you think he's um, unless he's old or you think he won't be that good in the future, particularly when you're starting. If you put him on a five-year deal, you'll be paying him 500 grand when he might won 5 million. Everybody wins. Because no one cares about the player anyway. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. The game's going to be coming to an end. I had to cut this one short because because of the cutscenes and things like that. So I suppose I'll tell you guys what's going on in my next video. I don't know what it, I don't know when it'll be. I don't know what it'll be, but I'll I'll let you guys know then cuz that they'll take a while to commentate on too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed the video. Uh thanks for your continued support everyone and I'll see you guys later. Be sure to leave a like, rate and a comment and please subscribe. Thanks a lot guys. See ya. Still, they can't reach the penalty area. Can he pick out a colleague?